after today you will see me in your dream i will push you with kogoko as you are going i'll be flogging you there is a place prepared for every one of you if you are a child of god he said, for I know the thoughts I think towards you, thoughts of good and not of evil, to give you a future, a hope, and an what? Expected end. And he said again in Exodus 23 and verse 20, I send my angel ahead of you to prepare you in the way and bring you into the place. So there is a place. Tell your neighbor there is a place. You are not meant for ordinary place. You are meant for the place of blessing. Place of honor. You must know who your father is so that you will know where you must end. If God be your father, you must not end up in ordinary place. Good fathers don't prepare bad place for their children. They prepare good place. Jesus said, I go to prepare mansion for you. Even here on earth, there is a place prepared for you. David confirmed it, said, Thou hast brought me to my wealthy place. So there is a place prepared. Tell your neighbor, there is a place prepared. So if you are not yet in your prepared place, I bet you under God, you must enter it. I said you will enter it. Hear me? The situation around your life does not have power to disfigure God's plan for you. No! He said, for I alone know. I alone. I didn't consult anybody. I didn't show anybody. I alone know the plan that I think towards you. And that plan, God is following it face after face. No wonder scripture said, He that has begun a good work in you, so no matter how you have started, God has begun a good work. It may look as if it is rough now. But scripture told me, <laughs> for we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. Do you know that at times your challenges help to bring you into the fullness of God's plan? Or you may not know. You may be wondering which kind of life be this self? Which kind of life be this self? Not knowing that God is using that challenge, that situation to be moving you closer to your blessing. You will get there. Amen. I say you will get there. Amen. I say again you will get there. Amen. In this revival season, we are taking a look again. What is a revival? A revival is a move of the spirit. There are tears of the spirit of man to commit to kingdom advancement. Only a revived spirit can partake in a revival. A dead fish cannot swim, even though it's in water. Am I correct? Only a revived spirit can partake in a revival. For your spirit man to be revived, you must have been restored to your spiritual status. Scripture says we were once dead in sin, but we are now made to be alive in God. Sin can kill your spirit. But revival can reawaken your spirit. So only a revived spirit can partake of a revival. And once your spirit has been revived, there is a longing in your heart. There is a cry in your soul to be where God wants you to be. You begin to hunger for God. You begin to desire God. Anytime you stay and your desire for God begins to go down, 
be careful. Something is wrong. So for you to partake in kingdom advancement endeavor, your spirit man must have been revived by the spirit of God. By the spirit of God. I'd like us to understand again, committing yourself to kingdom advancement is a function of interest. What you are not interested, you will not be committed. I'm interested, so I'm committed. People only get committed to what will bring good. When they know something is at stake for them, they get committed. When they know something will flow for them, something will answer for them, they get committed. So our commitment is a function of our interest. And our interest is a function of what we have seen will come our way. Do you waste your energy on something that will not add value to you? Or something that will not add result to your life? No. So our level of commitment determines God's commitment to the faithful. I will show myself faithful. To the crooked, I will show myself what? Shrewd. God is a master in the game. He said again, the Lord is with you while you are with him. If you forsake him, he will also forsake you. If you forsake him, he will also do what? Forsake you. He said for a long time, Israel was without the true God and without the teaching priest. And without the law, the Lord is with you while you are with him. He said, draw near unto me and I will draw near unto you. Do you draw close to your enemy? Say the truth. Draw near unto me and I will draw near unto you. You look for me, I look for you. If you are not looking for me, I'm not looking for you. Draw near and I will draw near. Stay far and I will stay far. Very simple. No wonder the psalmist said, a day I spend in your court is more than a thousand years outside. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. I was glad when they say, come, let us go to the house of the Lord. That's a sign that this person wants to go forward. Interest fuels commitments. Any house you are going to regularly, there is something you have seen there. So if you take him serious, he will take you serious. So a revival steers up and awakens. It refuels and refires your passion. Oh Lord, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul longed for thee. My flesh tested after thee to see thy power. Passion. So revival reawakens your passion. It refires your passion. Many of us we are zealous when we go born again, but suddenly we have lost our momentum. We are now taking this, this thing, let's take it easy. They are now modern Christian, social Christian, city believers. You go soon reach your village. <laughs> there is no modern Christian anywhere. It is still the same old Bible that they use. Is there any new modern truth? Is there any new modern truth? There's no new modern truth. Truth is truth as far as it is from here. That's why you need to reawaken your passion for God so that you will be on motion for God. Only people that have passion make motion. If you lack passion, you never make any motion. If the church is going forward and you are not going forward, check it, something is wrong with you. If in the wave of this revival taking place in Living Faith Church worldwide, 
Something good is not happening in your life. You have a question mark to answer. You, you, you yourself. But the beginning of things turning around for you is for your spirit man to experience a change. Once a change takes place in your spirit, things begin to change. Because the spirit is the engine room for the total man. When things begin to work spiritually, everything begins to go right. That's why there is need for you to refire your passion so that you can be on motion. So that you can make progress. What is the proof of a revival? Number one proof of a revival is that the word of God continually comes alive in your heart. In increasing dimension. The word of God keep coming alive. And the spirit entered into me. When he spake unto me. And set me on my feet. Without an increase in the word. There may likely be a breakdown. No wonder scripture said, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. My son, pay attention to my word. Incline thy ears unto my saying. He said, let it not depart from thy heart. Pay attention. Please, I beg us at this point... We need to continually discipline ourselves. Tell your neighbor, discipline yourself. We need to continually discipline ourselves to pay attention to the word because there is a tendency for you to feel that you know the word, that you don't need to open it. At that point, you are entering a state of spiritual dryness. From week to week, how many times do you open the Bible? Even the one that is in your phone, how many times do you read it? There is a tendency you may go into spiritual extinction if you are not careful. One proof that you are in a revival, a day cannot pass without the word entering. May you not be too busy to forget that you need to look into the world. Hear me? We will never, till Jesus come, outgrow reading the world. I remember in 2007, when I was in Sapele, my pastor asked me to preach a message, what is faith? So as I got to the he said the message this evening starts off, what is faith? Everybody started doing, mm -hmm. no, faith is, mm -hmm. <laughs> it was so funny. So I was just smiling, so I allowed everyone to do the, mm -hmm. faith is, mm -hmm. they have finished preaching my message before I started. I said, good, I'm, I'm hearing the chorus. I said, hear this. You don't know faith until faith defines your problem. Everybody sat up. Because some people think that faith is a Hebrew 11 verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things so for the evidence of things not seen. You don't see anything. <laughs> until faith fix your problem, you don't know faith. You don't have faith. It is not in the definition. It is in the fixing. You can define it, but let it fix your life. Until it fix your life, you don't know it. No one that possibly does say, add to your faith knowledge. There is what to be added on a daily basis. 
You don't know it until it has settled you. So we don't assume that we have known the word. No wonder Paul said that I may know him. That I may know him. That I may know him. Brethren, I don't count myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, I press. Tell your neighbor, I press. I press unto the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus, for which I am apprehended. I press. I press to know. You must press to know the word. Open down my eyes, O Lord, that I will behold wondrous things out of thy law. You must press to know. If you fail to press, you will remain oppressed. If you fail to press, you will be oppressed by the devil. So one proof of the revival is there is a continuous hunger of the word in your heart. So the more of the word the more of the word, the more the move of the spirit. So you can be an active mover or partaker in the spirit without you growing in the word. You keep growing in the word. Growing in the word is not an exceptional. We keep growing. If you don't grow in the word, you will groan in this world. You will groan. You will cry. So we keep growing. You will never outgrow eating the word. Has anyone here outgrown eating? So you keep eating. The reason why you need to eat is to stay healthy, is to stay strong, is to stay fit. So if you are not eating the word, you are not fit. You can't stay healthy. Your system may fail no matter how sound they look. Eating the word helps you to stay nourished. If you are not eating healthy food, very soon people will ask you, is they sick? Am I saying the truth? Is they sick? They say, no, nothing they do me. It's just a sign that it's eating poor food. So we keep eating the word. You you, Any time you stay and your appetite for the word is fading, check it. You're almost out of the revival. So the word helps to saturate the fullness of the presence of God. The more the word, the more saturated. Let the word of Christ dwell within you richly. Colossians 3 verse 16. Let the word of God dwell within you richly. Richly. If you are rich in the word, you will be rich in the blessing. You will be rich in the blessing. You will be rich in favor. You will be rich in the grace of God. You will be rich in the help of God because the word is the channel to God. These words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. The life of God. The presence of God. They are channeled by the word of God. This word that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. So the more the world, the more there is an entrance. What is in the revival for me? Like I said before, you must know what is in the revival for you before you become an active partaker. People never get committed to what they are not interested. And what steers their interest is what is at stake for them. When you know what is at stake for you, you get more committed. One thing that is in for you in this revival is financial fortune. Tell your neighbor financial fortune. Financial fortune is unleashed, is released by God into my life, into your life. Psalm 35 and verse 27. Psalm 35 and verse 27. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favors my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which had pleasure in the prosperity of what? God has pleasure in prospering you because you also have pleasure in magnifying him. Go back to that scripture. Psalm 35 verse 27. 
that favor my righteous cause. You favor me, I favor you. You favor my house, I make sure I drive your life forward. I told you the other day, God is a do me, I do you God. You do for me, I do for you. You favor my house, I favor your life. That favors my righteous cause. What is his righteous cause? That signs and wonders will be wrought in the lives of men. Lord, in this service today, Paul said, brethren, pray for us that utterance be granted us. That the word of God will have a free cause. Meaning, as the word is coming, let somebody's life be changed. As the word is coming, let somebody go with a testimony. As the word is coming, let someone be delivered from shame. As the word is coming, let somebody's reproach be terminated. You can't be doing this and not get blessed. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, he said, that shall he reap also. If you sow to the flesh, you shall of the flesh reap corruption. If you also sow to the spirit. So in praying for kingdom advancement, we are sowing to the spirit. How do we favor his righteous cause? By reaching out to souls. By reaching out to souls. We reach out to souls in two dimensions. Lord, this person must be saved. Whatever power has held this person down, any power of darkness that has vowed not to let this person go, Lord, by the fire of the Holy Ghost, let the chain be broken. The soul you don't pray for may not be delivered because there is a strong man already holding him. And Jesus said, if a strong man keepeth his goose, he says his house is what? Intact. He said, when a stronger than he is come, so you must go in the power of his might to break the chain over the person's life. Some people you think that they don't want to give their life to Christ. It's a lie. You have not attacked the strong man. There is a strong man caging people in smoking, in drinking, in fornication, in wickedness. That's a strong man. I remember in 2001 when we went for evangelism, those days before you become a pastor, you must have 75% attendance in evangelism. Not that you just say, Sunday morning like this now, they will give you boss. Say with me, boss. Shall you say you win so? Go carry them, come. You must bring them to church. As you bring them, they will mark your register. And on Monday, you go and bring them for foundation class. That's what Papa is bringing back now. They stopped it long, but now they are bringing it back. Because any pastor that doesn't have passion for soul cannot manage a church. So you must pray. We got to evangel that morning. We have ministered to him finish on Saturday and on Friday. On, in the morning, he was buzzing Igbo. You know what they call buzz? That's their language. So when I got there, he said, drop it now. He dropped it. He said, Pastor, why they shout now? <laughs> I said, go get ready. I'm waiting for you. I'm not going anywhere again. I'll wait for you. He entered. You all rush the bath. We are clothes. I made sure that that one must follow me that day. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? I made sure that that one must follow me that day. As he was going, the auntie, they were telling me, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, agree follow you. Thank you. And I was happy that that person followed me that day because it was more like a terror within their neighborhood. Everybody dreaded him. But he asked me, I don't know what you make me drop the cigarette. You know what I'm saying? A power. See me drop cigarette. Hear me and hear me well. Don't give up on any soul. Keep praying for the person. The more you are praying, the more the chains are broken. The more you pray, the more the chains are broken. And hear this the person will follow you to church.
And as you are doing this, God is saying, I will bless you. A soul is more than a million dollars. A soul is more than a million pounds. That's why when you are a soul winner, God is opening channels, say with me, channels, of blessings for you. We heard that testimony of that wretched lawyer who in his lifetime has never gotten more than 10,000 naira. Immediately he keyed into soul winning. The first house he bought was 150 million. I didn't say 150,000, 150 million. The second one, 70 million. God can change anybody's level. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So when God sees what you do towards his house, he begins to arrange things to change in your life. He begins to open doors to unlock your future. Your destiny begins to bloom. He said again, my city, through prosperity, shall be spread abroad. So it takes wealth to reach out to other places. But God will entrust some people. Wealth is entrusted. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Before God puts money in your hand, he can trust you. And the proof of the trust begins with you. Offering, tithing, you don't they grow. Sacrificial offering, you are growing. Before you know what's happening, doors are opening. Opportunities others are struggling to get will just be calling for you. The favor of the Lord will just be answering for you. That is how it works. So don't think it's by your hard work. If not, many of you here, you are working hard. But wealth is entrusted. You must prove to God before he can thrust it into your hand. You will not miss it. I say you will not miss it. How do I maximize the blessedness of the revival? You must clean up and continue to remain clean. If you don't clean up, God will not show up. If you don't clean up, God will not show up. In John chapter 8 and verse 29, he that hath sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always the things that please him. I do always, not sometimes, I do always the things that what? Please him. Is God pleased with what you are doing now? That's a big question. Is God pleased with what you are doing now? Some of the things you are doing, do you ask yourself, is God happy with me? Is God pleased with me? There is need for you to ask. You can't be doing evil and expect God to be with you. Will he be with you? No. You can't be working with evil people and expect God to be with you. For where? Sit that nine day with you. Whatever you are doing, check it. Either you are attracting God or you are driving God. So you can, just by your hand, drive God away from your life and from your house. And when you drive God away, <laughs> there is no vacuum in life. Oh. Satan will take over. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Satan will take over. May you not drive God away from your life. Yeah. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Yeah. Many of us are not conscious of this. We think that uh, there are things you, don't, you do and don't get away with it. There's what we call evil open window. You can open the door to evil in your house by inviting evil. I remember a woman that went, the husband was not around, the children were not around. He went and invited a native doctor. That's what we call evil open window. Satan used her 
to open the door of evil to their house. And she still they come church. That's why some people still visit bad, bad places and be expecting that God will be with them. It's a lie. Before they, they knew what is happening, they started experiencing some strange attacks and strange manifestations. And everybody was still pretending to be holy because they are going to church. You may be in church and not be in touch. Before you know what's happening, the attack started with her. Because she was the one that opened the door. It entered the husband, the children. And so it didn't let they go. So one day the husband said, what's really happening? What's really happening? Something is going wrong. We need to pray. So as they started praying, finally the Holy Ghost touched her. She confessed. Evil open window. There are some people you will meet, you will contact evil. The people you meet, you either contact God or you contact evil. Mind who you meet. God fought for Jehoshaphat. But look at what scripture said about Jehoshaphat in 2 Chronicles 20 from verse 35. When he met Ahaziah, God left him alone. He said, since you started accompanying with Ahaziah, I'm no longer with you. I will break your sheep. And he couldn't go forward again. Clean up internally and externally. My rule is, if I don't like you, I will drive you straight. Thank God I don't know how to pretend. Any person you endure that is evil will bewitch you. They will continue to afflict you. Clean up until the day that King Uzziah died. Isaiah saw the Lord. In this covenant day of open door, I want you to know that God is a specialist in opening doors. He said, I am the one that opens and no man can close. And any door I close, no man can open. I am the one that opens. So I want to let you know God can open your door. Your amen is too weak. There are physical doors and there are spiritual doors. Now, I want to let you know that even naturally, the opening of doors is becoming more and more scientific. Am I saying the truth? More and more scientific. There are doors you open with key. There are doors you open with electronic card. You just put the door will open. Am I correct? There are others you just flash. You just flash it, the door will open. Am I correct? There are cars you open from your bedroom. Am I saying the truth? So if these are possible with the physical, much more in the spiritual, doors are open. In fact, the spiritual is the control room for the opening of doors that pertains to life and destiny. Life and destiny. I remember one car I saw, I don't know, in one advert. The man has not entered, though. He has opened the, he has opened the door. Open boots, open everywhere. Started the car. It's just for him to just enter and drive. There are cars now you don't need key. You just press the button. God will give you that type. You better say amen. 
I've been a keke na pepe one year village. You must get there. Yeah. You better say another amen. amen. As big as a house is, it requires one small key called key. Am I saying the truth? But there is what we call the master key. Tell your neighbor there is a master key. Some keys can open some doors, but master key can open all doors. All doors. Someone is asking, is this scriptural? Let's open our Bible. John chapter 14, verse 14. If ye ask, what? What is the meaning of anything? If ye ask anything in my name, I will do what? If he asks. If he asks. So, the doors of life, doors of destiny, doors of progress, doors of success, doors of flourishing, they are opened through prayer. If he asks anything. If he asks anything, are you afraid to ask? If he asks anything, he said, I will do it. Don't forget he told us, I am the one that opens and no man can close. So there is no limit to the doors that prayer can open for you. No wonder the limits of your prayer is the limits of your open doors. I am the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Is it difficult for me to open your life now for flourishing? Is it difficult for me to open your life now for success? Is it difficult for me to open your life now for marriage? Is it difficult for me to open your womb for baby? Even though someone has vowed that he will not see the baby, the person will still die and the baby will still come? You better say amen. amen. God has done things to prove to us that he's still in charge in opening doors. A prophet said, by my word, it will not rain. So the heaven can be locked. Someone has power to lock the heaven and to open the heaven. He said, by my word, not by the Lord. There shall be no rain. Did it rain? It did not rain. So your knee is the power to your open doors. When you are prayerless, you will see no open doors. But when you are prayerful, doors begin to open. He said, by my word. By my word. Fear a man that understands prayer. He can lock you out. When you understand the force of prayer, no witch no cultic man can close your door. Scripture says we are heirs of Christ. Heirs of God and joint heir with what? Christ. No man can determine how far you will go. No man can determine how far you will reach. No man can determine what will flow to you. I am the one that opened it. I give unto you power to open doors.
Somebody say that uh, a witch, they call his name and lock a padlock and threw inside water. Who did inside water? Who made the water? Hear me and hear me well. From today, you will experience open doors. If you are saying amen, say it better. Amen. amen. Prayer can open the womb. It can open the doors of success. It can open the doors of business flourishing. How? There is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the almighty show it him. Show it him. You shall call upon me and I will answer you and show you. So in prayer, God opened doors by showing us what eyes cannot see, you begin to see. What ears have not heard, you begin to hear. So the altar of prayer is the altar of open doors. Whatsoever you ask in my name, God has no problem opening it. Can you now see why the enemy is fighting your prayer life? Because the more open doors you experience in life, the more accomplishments you make in life. You can't accomplish more in life if doors are not opening. You are limited. And what the enemy is planning to do is to limit you. No wonder Paul said, for a great door and effectual is open unto us. But there are many adversaries. So the plan of the enemy is to make sure that he hinders you from entering the open door. He said, we will tarry at Ephesus. In prayer, we tarry. We clear the obstacles and enter. You must enter. Yeah. I say you must enter. Yeah. So, you never cease experiencing open doors as long as you keep praying. No one that scripture say, pray without ceasing. When you pray without season, you enter into a seasonless life. So every season, whether dry season or raining season, so things are working in your life. You will not miss it again. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better, amen. amen. Your destiny. You see you now that people are looking at and they are pitying you. You are, you are the cause. People they pity, they end up in the pit. I am not a creature of pity. I am designed for envy. Tell your neighbor, I am designed for envy. I am designed for envy. Blessings go with envy. If they pity you, it's because nothing good is showing in your life. But when blessings begin to show, men will envy you. You will now give them topic of discussion. Topic of gossip. And when God blessed Isaac, the Philistines envied him. So don't feel bad that people are envying you. If they are not, envy, if they are not envying you, there is something that they have not seen that is attractive. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Even dead people, they are talking about them. How much more you? So they will talk about you. But I want to let you know from today, no door will be closed against you. If you are saying amen, say better, amen. amen. Rise up to your feet. Someone will say, ah, Pastor, don't finish now. Nah, nah. We want to open the doors now. Are you ready to open the doors? Jesus said, I give unto you what? Power. He didn't end there. He said, I have the key of David in my hand. So who did he give the key of David? Who did he give the key of David? That goes to let you know from today, if you desire open door in an area, the door must open. Yeah. If you are saying amen, say better, amen. amen. No devil can say the door will not open. It's not my word like hammer and like fire that break it. So anyone that is fighting your open door will be broken. If you are saying amen, say better, amen. amen. That break it. 
when you want to now naturally when you don't we are looking for the key and you can't find the key what next do we do break the door you break the key and enter your enter your room true of us so we are going to break every padlock now you better say amen, amen. any door that forces are shut against you that door will be forced open now in the name of jesus amen. the prayer is not long every door connected to my new dawn to my progress to my finances to my success open in the name of jesus open in the name of jesus every barrier to my open door be crushed in the name of jesus every door connected to my breakthrough to my change of level to my change of story be open in the name of jesus i command the door open in the name of jesus doors of success doors of progress doors of business enlargement doors of flourishing doors of lifting be open in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is a strong tower. Lerado Shakata. Engage the name. Father, in the name of Jesus, every door connected to my breakthrough, I command them to be open. I command them to be open by the fire of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus, every barrier resisting my open door, I command the barriers crush. Doors of success, doors of supply, doors of marital fulfillment, be open in the name of Jesus. En quebrado si soniga recata lia ga 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 lia ga 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 doors connected to my blessing be open be open be open be open be open be open by the fire of the holy ghost be open in the name of jesus be open le rorosh Engaga, Rasezo, Le Catoria, En Caprecate, Jezonage, Le Cotecori, De Roshikata, Ligoro Shata, be open, be open, be open in the name of Jesus, be open, be open, be open in the name of Jesus, Larandedesh, Le Rondorosh, Le Cotaria, Jeco Caprete, lift up your voice. Pray from the depth of your heart. Doors connected to my marriage, be open. Doors connected to my flourishing. Doors connected to my success. Doors connected to my progress, be open. God is not a liar. Every door. Connected to my new door, to my finance, to my success, to my breakthrough. Be open in the name of Jesus. Be open. Be open in the name of Jesus. Be open. Be open. Zianga la bolo shata. Le copreke te suza zia. Be open. Be open. Be open. Be open. Be open. Every door connected to my glory in the name of Jesus. Be open. By the authority. Of the resurrected Christ, I command every door connected.
to my blessing, to my glory, to my flourishing. Be open in the name of Jesus. Lane, je globoros, en totaria, le secutari, je soni aletapa, le garata yaga, le sodego bredeli alata. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. If you are saying amen, say a good amen. amen. All eyes closed, all heads bowed. You are here, you are not born again. The entrance of Jesus is the beginning of open doors in your life. Wherever you are, you need these open doors for things to work well for you. Put your right hand on your chest right now and pray this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come unto you today. I know that I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Wash me with your precious blood. I reject sin. I reject Satan. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.